and we were talking about how young Mikey was when she started. I thought she was 19, but she tells me she was 20. And of course, she's a grown up now, mother. And I said, she was one of the best students we've had that come into the company. And, and it's sort of beautiful. It's like having a plant in your office and you watch the plant grow and unfold. That's the way we watch Mikey. Mikey as a human being has just watched us. We've watched her just bloom like a beautiful flower and become a very, a very important executive in our company. Today we're going to do, I'm going to teach you a lesson first or run through a lesson. You may be familiar with it, you may not. I believe it's one of the most important things to understand. Because if you don't understand this, you're going to let the outside world control you. If you do understand it, doesn't mean you're really going to take complete control, because I don't know anybody that takes complete control. I think we wander off periodically because of the way it happens. I'm going to show you that. Um, and that's something you're not going to stop. But you can continually work at taking greater control over your life. And when you do, things start to happen. So I want you to watch closely. This is going to be a good lesson. Now, here we go. Look it. We're starting and we're talking about these frequencies. Frequencies are very important. You, you are a frequency. You live on frequencies. Everybody does. We know our phones operate on frequencies. And what I want to do, I want to lead you to the path that this book has kept me on now for 60 years. Now, of course, the path has kept widening and widening and it's getting better. Now, watch this really carefully. This drawing is, without question, one of the most important concepts I've ever learned. Now, there's the mind and the body. And we divide the mind into two parts. We say, there's your conscious and your subconscious mind. The conscious mind has hooked up to it all these sensory factors. But you know something? I've got a little dog here in the studio, Dolly, and Dolly can see, hear, smell, taste, touch too. But you see, Dolly does not have what we've got inside. She has these sensory factors, and so she can see, hear, smell, taste, touch, and she picks up information. But this is our intellectual mind, and now this is what separates us from the dollies of the world and the squirrels and the horses and the, the birds and everything. Our intellect separates us from all of that. These faculties are incredible. You work at developing these, and I'm going to tell you, everything in your life will start to get better. If you just worked on perception, change the way you look at things. You're not going to change the conditions or circumstance in your life, but you can change your perception. And it's these intellectual factors that enable us to control our emotional mind. Now look at The emotional mind is what controls the vibration we're in. We were not taught how to use these higher faculties. And I'm fortunate because we're not, we're not really in charge of ourselves. So the sensory factors start to take over. Now look here. Let's suppose we had these and something like this hits. There's something from outside strikes one of our senses. It could be an explosion. It could be a fire down the street, whatever it is. It could be something, but it's grabbing our attention and it gets us intellectually, emotionally involved and uh, our world is lost. You see, when something hits us from outside through the senses, it's, it can just grab all of our conscious attention. And we want to show you how to connect the dots so that that does not happen. Now think of it. You can earn more money. I showed you the secret to earning money is multiple sources of income. Now the trick is to learn how to set them up. Um, I earn money while I'm sleeping. I have a lot of friends that do too. You can do the same thing. Learn to begin to live the life that you were designed to live. Do you ever think about the way you're designed to live? You are God's highest form of creation. There's nothing on the planet that will even come close to you. Unfortunately, most people don't understand that. Now look here for a moment. You are a spiritual being. Your spiritual DNA is perfect. There is perfection within you. It requires no modification or improvement. It's perfect. You are a soul. You don't have one, you are one. 
And your spiritual DNA is perfect. There's perfection within every one of us. Our trick here is to bring that perfection to the surface and apply it to what we're doing. You see, because we're spiritual beings, it's all-knowing. Spirit's all-knowing, so we have all the knowledge with us at all times. It's a matter of letting it come to the surface. We have all the power with us. We never run out of power. Never run out of power until we let it run out. Okay? It's ever-present. doesn't matter where we are. Now, that's the real you. And just think, you're walking around, you've got all the noise there ever was or ever will be. Look here for a moment. Let's look at this. You see this? Look here. This phone, so look at it for a minute. This phone, the way to build this phone was always here. The way to build this system that's enabling me to communicate with you and throw some slides up so you can see them. The way to do that has always been here. But I'm going to tell you something. I've been in this business now since, well, I've been in the business since 1966. I've been studying it since 1961. But when we come into the business, at first, we, uh, we didn't have PowerPoint. We didn't have computers. We had uh, chalkboards. We worked on chalkboards. And then we went to flip charts. And then we went to uh, overhead slides. And on and on we went until ultimately we ended up on the computer. But the point is, the way to build this phone has always been here. The way to build a better phone is already here. Everything is already created. We can tune into it. And we can make marvelous things happen. Now let this represent you. If we blow this up, Tom, this represents you or me when we were little babies. And as a baby, our mind was wide open. There's the symbol of the mind that we're using here of the baby. Subconscious mind wide open. Conscious faculties have not developed. Now that baby's mind is soaking up everything that's going on around it. All the information, everything that's happening in the baby's environment is going directly into the baby's subconscious mind. It's rather sad, but that's the way it happens. We become a product of our environment. You know, almost all welfare recipients are third, fourth, fifth generation welfare recipients. That's where your self-image was formed. Now, some people changed it. I changed mine. Some people never do, though. They go right, right from the cradle all the way through to the end. It's the same self-image. This is your paradigm. Your paradigm is that program inside that controls our habitual behavior. And almost all of our behavior is habitual. Can we change the paradigm? We absolutely can. And that's what we talk about. We definitely can change the paradigm. Now... We start to develop conscious faculties as babies. We go to what we see, hear, smell, taste, touch. Then, of course, we start to develop our higher faculties. They come along. But the truth is, we never develop them properly. We don't. And school begins. That keeps us busy. Now look, we're not taught how to guard our own mind. I'm going to show you something here It's very important. There's a power flowing into your consciousness. It never stops. It's flowing in all the time. It flows into your thinking mind. Now, you've got a choice. You can go to the left or the right. You've got a choice. When this power flows in, you can go to the left or the right. When it flows in, now, if you go to the left, that's ignorance. You don't know. There's two sides to life. Because people live in ignorance and they're not getting the results they want as fast as they can get them, they start to doubt and worry. What did the great sufferer in the Bible say? He says, lo, the thing I fear has come to visit upon me. I guess so. Whatever idea you hold in your consciousness, that's putting you on a track. And we take that and that doubt or worry and we turn it into fear. Now, this is a process. What you've got to understand is you're dealing with the central nervous system. It's the most complex electrical system in the universe. This all happens at warp speed. 
The fear must be expressed with and through the body. The body's the instrument of the mind. It expresses itself as anxiety. Can't see that very well, can you, Tom? Somebody help me here. Can the monitors be read properly? Yes, we can see it, Bob. You can see it okay? All right. Yeah. When a person's experiencing fear, that fear must be expressed with and through the body, and it expresses itself as anxiety. Now, anxiety is not expressed. Anxiety is suppressed. People suppress anxiety. You'll often hear people talking about anxiety. They don't know what causes it. I'm showing you what causes it right here. And that anxiety is suppressed. That's what turns into depression. You get all this bad energy. You suppress it, bottle it up inside. That turns to depression, which turns into disease and then disintegration. It's like St. Carl Lewis said, we don't die, we kill ourselves. We just do it so slow. Now, why would a person do that? Do it because they don't understand. Faith, based on understanding, is the key to freedom. So watch this very carefully now. Faith based on understanding. The person knows there's thought power running into their consciousness. They take a look at the results, and the results aren't there that they need. They may don't, not have the money that they need, but they've asked for it, they're holding a vision of it, and they believe it's coming. They're not going to worry. Why don't they worry? Well, because they're choosing to go over here. They do understand how the mind functions. And they know that although the money hasn't appeared yet, if they focus, if they hold the idea in their mind, the money will come when it's needed. It may be in the 11th hour, but it does come. Now, understanding is understanding the law. You see the law of opposites there. That's the law of polarity, the negative, the positive. It's the in, the out, the up, the down, the, the, hot, the hot, the cold. It's the law of opposites, law of polarity. Now, there's only one way to understand the laws or understand what we're talking about here insofar as the mind's concerned, and that is through study. If you don't study, you're never going to understand. But through study, you start to understand what makes you tick. You start to understand why a person gets upset. That understanding leads to faith. They just know it's coming. Faith leads to well-being. Well-being is expressed, and the expression accelerates. Why? Because you're at ease. You're not diseased. And that's because there's creation. You've got a choice. You can go that way or that way. You take a choice. Which way are you going to go? Now, most people stay here. Why do they stay here? Because they don't study. Like I was talking earlier, I've seen Mikey change her life since she's worked here. Now, she's been here 10, 12, 15 years, something like that. So over a period of time, you start studying, you're going to make a lot of headway. I want to suggest that you study this real carefully. Because if you haven't got what you want, you start going down the wrong side, you're going to lose. You've got to learn how to control your mind. You do not let ignorance take over. Now, we're all ignorant. Ignorance simply means not knowing. And there's all kinds of things we don't know. As you study, you eliminate the ignorance. What do you think I'm doing? Why do you think I pick up this every day and I read the same thing? Now, let's think about it. The lesson to be learned from the present aviation, or the, the practical aviation of the present day, is that of the triumph of principle over precedent. It's the law over what's always happened. Of the working out of an idea to its logical conclusions, in spite of the accumulated testimony of all past experiences, to the contrary. And with such notable examples before us, can we say it's futile to inquire whether by, you know, the same methods we may not unlock still more important secrets and gain some knowledge of the unseen causes which are at the back of external and visible conditions? You see, we're working with something that's already here. What we're doing is developing understanding. If you don't have one of these, you want to get one. Go to norasgold.com and get a book and, and take a couple of pages and say, I'm going to read this until I'm doing it. Like I asked Earl. I said, Earl, you, you, that's a lot of trouble changing those pages. He said, I don't change them very often. 
And I said, well, how often do you change them? He said, I change them when I find myself doing what the author's talking about. Consciously entertain an idea, you get emotionally involved in the idea, you step out and act the idea, and you change the end result. That's called education. Let's go now, Miss Mikey, to the Q&A. You got it. All right, this first question. Besides studying, do you have any recommendation for daily practice to manifest desires faster? Well, meditation, um, visualization, and take short periods of time to visualize yourself with what you want. I know in, um, in this new program that Arash and I have been talking about, it was a million dollar mindset. I mean, it's a big deal. Um, we're going to show people how to do that. Well, visualizing is a very important part of it. And, of course, if you want to be a millionaire, you've got to really understand how the mind works. It's not a difficult thing to do. A million dollars is not very much money. I think it used to be quite a bit, but it's not very much today. You can go through it. It's like that. So the trick is to develop the millionaire mindset. That's one of the things we're working on. But, you know, to study meditation, visualization, do those at periods. I mean, you, you, can, you can do it at a stoplight when you're driving. You can just, every, every time you hit a red light, boom, you'll start to visualize your goal as having already been achieved. Then you're going to start hoping you get red lights, and because you do, you're going to start to attract them. But every time you hit a light, boom, you bring that picture up in the screen of the mind. You're giving energy to it. Emerson said the only thing that can grow is the thing you give energy to. Okay, Mikey, what else do we got there? Speaking of the millionaire mindset, I have fallen in love with the idea of earning a million in the next 12 months. I have already started thinking like a millionaire, but I don't know how to act like one. Can you please give me some help? Um, I can give you some help in a question or in an answer, but get a hold of Arash, talk to him about it. Um, you see, if you go back and remember in the... Um, Hold on, let me see this. Um, there it is. Okay, throw this up on the screen, full screen, Tommy. Here we're going here, I'm going through this quick. I'll get up, we're talking about decision. We talk, now, if you make the decision, that you're going to do it. Um, you've got to be a committed decision. Well, when you make a committed decision, you've got to think and act like the person you want to become. It's not just thinking. You've got to think and act like the person you want to become. Now, the only prerequisite for doing that is want. Want is the only prerequisite for making the decision. You know, there's people look at a program and they I can't afford it. They can't afford not to do it. They can't afford not to. And that's why successful people make their decisions so fast. You've got to think and act. Thanks, Tom. Bob, this next question. Could you please explain how do you borrow someone else's belief? Well, I don't know as you borrow their belief. I'll tell you, when Ray Stanford sat down with me, and he didn't have this book in his hand at the time. That came up a little later. Um, he asked me if I ever read anything, and I said, no, I can't read. No, that wasn't true. I could. Not well, but I could. Um, the average person reads at a grade 7 level. We just click, click, click from one word to another. And then he gave me this book, and he said, if you do exactly what I tell you, you can have anything you want. Now, of course, I didn't really believe that. I did not believe it. But I believed he believed it. And so I made up my mind I was going to do exactly what he told me. If you do exactly what I tell you, I'll show you how to become a millionaire. If you, show, if you do exactly what I tell you, I'll show you how to use this information properly. Now, I can't show you how to become a billionaire because I'm not a billionaire. But I can show you how to become a multimillionaire. I can show you how to do that. Well, you see, I didn't know 
how much money Ray had, but I did know he always had money on him. He always had a roll of money in his pocket. I never had any. I was forever looking for a couple of bucks for gas. So I don't think I borrowed his belief. I think I just did exactly what he told me because I believed he believed it. And I, I guess I must have thought if I keep doing it, I'm going to win because I did exactly what he told me. And I think that's what you do. I don't think you bore their belief. I think you follow their instructions and you're going to find your own belief will start to happen. See, your belief is based on your evaluation of something. So the more you study, the more you're going to believe. Like when I start, I was looking, I searched all over the place trying to figure out how do you believe? You know, you read the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, the Torah, the Book of Mormon, read all the, all the spiritual books, and they all say you have to believe. How do you believe? Van der Waal was sitting with me one day, my mentor. We were eating something and come out in conversation. He said our belief system is based upon our evaluation of something. And frequently, if we have reevaluated a situation, our belief about it will change. Well, you see, it was from reading this information over and over and over, by listening to Earl Nightingale talking about it over and over and over, that's, um, um, that's how I developed my belief. It was through reevaluating who I was, and I kept studying it, and it kept working. Do exactly what I love that, Bob. You do exactly what a person tells you until you find out they're lying or they don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not lying to you, and I do know what I'm talking about. I'm very good at this, very good. I'm not much good at anything else, but I don't want to do anything else. This is all I do. I don't do anything around my home. I don't do anything. I don't run the studio. I don't even run the company. Sandy Gallagher is our CEO and president. I just do this. This is all I do. So it's, it's natural. I'm going to get better at it. And I got a lot of help. I got to get some of the best help in the world here. Tharash and Doug Dane and Corey and um, Tommy and Mikey. I mean, just phenomenal help. Keep going. I'm getting off on the track here. All right. This next question. What is the best remedy for being overwhelmed with daily life needs, kids, cooking, cleaning, bills, jobs, pets, machines, etc., while still dreaming, imagining, noting, sketching, affirming, meditating, etc.? You know, that's a heck of a good question, because if you come into this, <laughs> you just describe me when I come into this. You talk about being overwhelmed. I am. Um, I didn't have any idea how I was going to pay what I had to pay, do what I had to do. But going back in retrospect, what did I do? I started to read this every day. I started to do exactly what Ray told me. You've got to get, you've got to get a mentor. You've got to get a program. You get in one of our programs, you've got to commit that you're going to do exactly what we tell you. Um, um, I think that's how you become how you overcome the, the overwhelm. See, the overwhelm is all the things that are, you're neglecting. And you're neglecting them because you're in a confused state. You know, if there's confusion inside, there's going to be chaos outside. But out of all chaos comes order. And it's a higher degree of order than that which existed prior to the chaos. So you're going to find it'll all get better. I sat outside this morning. There was three or four of us out there. And I was telling them just how how grateful I am. I mean, I'm just, I feel, I feel just so grateful. My life is, is really interesting. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love my family. I love all the kids. I love all the people I'm working with. I love what I'm doing. I mean, I couldn't, I don't even know how I can get it much better, but I know it's going to get better. So you overcome the overwhelm, I think, by focusing on the goal, and doing the best you can every day. And you make up your mind, you're not going to let it get to you. You will not let it bother you. You're going to control it. Okay? All right, Bob, up next. What is your advice on remaining on a high vibration regardless of negativity in your environment? Well, you may not remain on a high vibration, but you can stay on a positive track by not paying attention to the negative and focusing on the positive. You see, that's what I was talking to you about earlier. You know, we've got, um, 
we've got a choice. We really do have a choice. And if we're going to let the negative bother us, uh, we're going to lose. You've got to realize that you have the choice. You can follow the right path. You'll earn more money. You'll enjoy more freedom. And you'll begin to live the life that you were designed to live. And by studying, by studying this, you start to connect the dots. You see, Proctor Gallagher Institute has been in business for a long time. We operate all over the world. We have some of the best programs you'll ever find at taking control of yourself. That's really what we're involved in. And I do a master's program. It's absolutely incredible program. Where every week I go into stuff I've studied. The people in the master's program, master class, they're, uh, they're doing phenomenal. I have an inner circle program. You got to get in some of these programs. The inner circle program was started because people kept asking me, what do you study? How do you study? And somebody in the company, I'm not sure it was Mike, somebody or Ash, they said, why don't you start teaching the people that want to study what you're studying and the way you study it? I thought, that's a good idea, you know? So I played with it for a little while, and finally I did. Now I know somebody called it Inner Circle, and that's what it is. The Inner Circle, um, you come in and I, I show you what I'm studying now. And um, as you start studying what I'm studying now, you're going to start really moving because it's pretty good stuff. Well, you've got to change you if you want to change the results. And, of course, that's what I'm working on. i got to change me. I want our company to grow. And um, our company's growing. Sandy and I talk about it, and we are really into making it bigger and better for everybody in the company and outside the company. We take this responsibility we have very serious. Go to the next one there, Mikey. All right, and I'm just going to answer this question because I know it's about to be in the chat, which is how do you sign up for one of the programs Bob just mentioned? And the only way to do so is by having a conversation with your success advisor. All right, Bob, next question. How do I control my emotions, especially if they are triggered by injustice? Well, you see, the injustice, you permit that injustice to go to your subconscious mind. Let's suppose I'm treating you the wrong way. You don't have to get emotionally involved in that. You can reject it. You see, when you accept the negative that's coming at you, and that goes to your emotional mind, You've accepted it. You put it in your emotional mind. No one else can upset you without your permission. You've got to take charge of your emotions. Not an easy thing to do, maybe. Put the screen up, Tommy, if you will. Um, and look at this for a moment. Now, this is really important. Here you are here. There's negative and positive. Somebody sends a very negative idea and it may, be, um, it may be very insulting about you. Now, you can take and put that in your subconscious mind, and if you do, you lose. But you put it in there. They didn't put it in there. They put it in your conscious mind. You put it in your subconscious. And what we want to do is stop and think. What do we want to do? They'll say, I don't care if you think that. I don't think it at all. I'm a very nice person, I'm a good person, I do good work. And they just reject that, and they won't keep it. And pretty soon it's gone, and they don't have anything to do with it. Now that's what you can do. You've got to reject the injustice. You don't accept it, because it has no foundation outside of what you give to it. Look at the other person as making a, a, you know, a bad call. You're a good person, you're a nice person, you don't accept the injustice. This is a very big thing, you know. Next one there, Mikey. How do you get past the terror barrier when you are stuck in fear? <laughs> you just got to face the thing you fear. It's not an easy thing to do sometimes. You got to face the thing you fear and fear will leave you. Listen, fear is an illusion. It is an illusion. I've got to the point now where if the, if the terror barrier is not there, I don't want to have anything to do with it because I know I'm not growing. 
If the terror barrier, terror barrier is there because you're going ahead. And if you're going the other way, there's no terror barrier because you're going into experienced land where you've already been there. You've navigated all this area. You know what's going on. It's when you go up here, you don't know what's going on. That should excite you. Get the terror barrier to change and turn into something that it enthuses. You're really enthused about it. Face the thing you fear. When you get on the other side of it, you look at it and you think, God, listen, you either have faith or fear. You can't have both. You've got to have one or the other. And both of them demand that you believe in something you can't even see. Both faith and fear demand you believe in something you cannot see. Face it. Walk right up to it. They get out of here. You'll like yourself a lot better. Bob, this next question, you talked about decision and the importance of making a decision right away. Why is that and what happens if you don't? Well, what happens is you don't, you probably ultimately end up either just setting the thing aside and not making any decision or you decide not to. When you decide right away, it's you that's doing it, not your paradigm. When you play around with it, well, the paradigm comes up and it takes over. Paradigm won't have you go ahead at all. Paradigm will stop you from moving ahead. Paradigm wants you to stay where you are. You've got to step out of the paradigm and get out and do the thing you've never done before. It's a big deal, but you can do it. And you want to make up your mind you're going to do it. You're not going to let the paradigm control you anymore. Do it fast. Make a fast decision. You see, the only prerequisite is do you want it? Do you want it? If you want it, go after it. See, if you want it, you're in harmony. You're on that frequency. And the more you step in, the more you start to weld, form, become one with the frequency. Everything you want is already here. When you want it, that you're saying, I recognize I'm in harmony with this frequency. Now, it may be scary because you've never gone there. Step up to bat and do it. And, you will, and don't, don't let money stop you. The money, you'll always find the money. You will always find the money. And don't let time stop you. You'll always find the time. And you're going to always find the help. Listen, I've been at this a long time. When I started this industry, when I started in it, let me show you where I was when I started in it. Hold on a minute. This is almost like we were on a covered wagon or something. See this? Hello, this is Earl Nightingale. In this recording, the magic word is the first of 12 you'll receive in this series titled How You Can Lead the Field in the Modern World. I'd like you to know that I'm not going to try to tell you how to live your own life. That's none of my business, nor is it anybody else's business. That's your business. Nor is this Lead the Field program a collection of pleasantries, platitudes, or Pollyanna. It is a summation of more than 20 years of research on one subject, and that is, why do some people do many more do not? And the first thing let's talk about is the magic word. The experts call it the most important word as far as the results we get from life are concerned in this or any other language. And that word is attitude. Look at I listened to these little records over and over and over and over and over. Then we had to go out and try and sell them. I've been around since this industry started. I'm going to tell you, this was a difficult sell. And I was so emotionally involved in it, I sold it. I got other people emotionally involved. I watched their lives change. My life changed. If you'll do exactly what we tell you. Want to become a millionaire? Talk to a rash about the millionaire mindset. It's expensive, and it's not an easy thing to do. But I'm going to tell you the rewards are enormous. Want to study what I'm studying? Get in the inner circle. You want to get new, really good stuff every day? Everything that I have studied in the past, night, the master class. Now, if you're new and you're really starting and you need some help, every week, get in our coaching program. It's very well connected, very well laid out. 
If you're on here on this call, there's something in you that resonates with what we're talking about. There's something in you that causes you to want to be on the call here. You like this. Step out and do this. You saw some of those consultants at Mark uh, Josephi. He, uh, he's earning six figures every month. Now, he didn't do that at the start, but he kept working at it. Uh, consultants in this business, the, the opportunity is enormous. We've got a great team working with consultants. We work with them. You're in tune with something here or you wouldn't be here. You've got to understand wherever you are, you've been attracted to it. It's attracted to you. What's the next question there, Mikey? I've got two really good follow-up questions to what you were just talking about. The first is, if I follow yours and PGI's direction, what can I expect within the first six months of becoming a consultant? You got to do exactly what we tell you. It's not difficult. But what, when I say that, what we're saying is, is you cannot let the paradigm control you. We will give you direction and then you got to do it. I did that with the Prudential Insurance Company. I had their agents calling somebody before 9 a.m. in the morning. Ask everybody to purchase $100,000 worth of insurance. Sales went up by hundreds of millions of dollars. When I met my wife, she was an agent with the Metropolitan Life in Atlanta. I asked her, I said, what's the most you've ever earned in a year? It was $24,500. I said, do exactly what I tell you. Everything in your life will change. The next year she earned 495,000. Now listen, if you do exactly what we tell you, we'll show you how to reach your goal. You gotta decide on the goal. It's gotta be something you really want. That's what you'll get. All right, Bob, the next follow-up question I have for you is, how do you get emotionally involved with an idea? Well, you let yourself get emotionally involved. It's make-believe. Get, um, um, oh, what's his name? Who made this song, make-believe? Um, God, he's a great singer. Pretend. Who? Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole. Get Nat King Cole's song, Pretend. Play it. Pretend you're already there. Pretend. That's the magic of the imagination. It's like Van Gogh was asked, how did he do such beautiful work? He said, I dream my painting, and then I paint my dream. It all starts in the imagination. We've got to use the imagination to take us where we want to go. This company is nothing but the manifestation of the imagination of a group of people. Build the picture of exactly how you want to live. Take a pen and write it out in the present tense. I am so happy and grateful now that. What did Earl say? This great dream, this surging dynamic thing, invisible to all the world, except to the person who holds it, is responsible for every great advance of humankind. That's, where the, that's how we build the world. The cities you're living in, the cars you're driving, the clothes you're wearing, it starts in somebody's mind. Start in your mind. Build your world. Do what you want. Live the way you want to live. If you can tell me what you want, I can show you how to get it. Next one there, Mikey. This next question. I have been studying you and attending your trainings for a while now, but I'm not getting the results I want. What would your advice be? You're not doing what we tell you to do. You're not doing what we tell you to do. You probably don't have a goal. You probably haven't got a clearly defined goal. This information always works. We're talking about the laws of the universe. Winter always, never, pardon, winter never follows winter. I have right outside the studio here a Japanese maple tree. Right now the leaves are sort of a, a brownie color. But in the fall they become crimson red. Every fall and then they fall off the tree. That's the law at work. Well, when you're working with the law, you must reach the goal. Not maybe, not sometimes, every time. That's why Von Braun told Kennedy, the will to do it, 
The will holds the idea on the screen of the mind till it manifests in form. You're acting like the person you want to become. You're not acting like the person you want to become. You're letting results control you. You say, I'm not getting the results. You're letting your results control your thinking. You are getting everything that's in the mind. Next one. What is your advice to discipline my thoughts so that I'm not controlled by my circumstances? That's a damn good question because most people are controlled by their circumstance. Listen, your conditions and your circumstance, you probably had nothing to do with, but you're living with them. And you can change your conditions and circumstance with perception. Change how you see them. Say, I'm going to use these conditions and circumstance to help me get to where I want to go. Do you think the Wright brothers had an easy time getting the plane in the air? They never let anything stop them. It was principle over precedent. It didn't matter what anybody said. They were going to fly, and they knew they could because they could see themselves doing it. Absolutely refuse to let the conditions and circumstance control you. That's where you got to get tough. Say, damn it, have you ever had any idea that stuff I've been through to get to where we are? I mean, it wasn't an easy ride because of my own ignorance. All the problems were caused because I didn't understand the law. When you understand the law, you're going to be a big winner. Next there, Mikey. How do you focus and manifest your desires when you have negative people in close proximity to you? Oh, well, that's pretty common. Um, first of all, you're, you're not an exception to the rule. Most people have people who are negative on different degrees of negativity um, in close proximity to them. You've got to be able to control your thinking without reacting to them. You respond to them. When they're negative, you can respond. You don't react. When you react, you're letting their negative in and you're fighting it. Respond. Just say, that's interesting, and keep on going. I'm, make up your mind. Nothing is going to slow me down. I'm not going to let what's going on outside control me. I'm going to pick out some real good sources of getting good information, and I'm going to make them happen. Now, that's exactly uh, what I did with this. I used to play these in the car. If you think that's not dangerous, going around playing a record in a car while you're driving, it's not a smart thing to do, but I did it. I kept, I kept listening to the records, the recordings. And if you keep playing these over and over and over again, you should go back and go through. There's something here that I've said that's just the key to cause you to take off. What was it? True repetition. You listen, listen, listen. You're going to get it. Everyone, everyone that follows what we're saying is going to win because we're dealing with the laws of the universe and the laws don't change. They're exact. It's like I said, winter never follows winter. Never. When the tide goes out, it always comes in. It doesn't just keep going out, 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 out. It goes out and it comes in. The night follows the day. This is all the law. Well, when you build an image in your mind and hold that image, that controls the vibration you're in, which controls what you act. It controls what you attract. And it's the action attraction that changes the results. It's got to work. It works every time. And I know when it's not working, it's because I'm not working it properly. We'll take one more question. And then I'm going to give it to my compatriot over here, Arash, who is a giant in this business, I'll tell you. All right, Bob. I'm actually, can I ask you one more question from the feed and then one more question of my own before we hand it to Absolutely. Rosh? Absolutely. Yes, you're in charge. Okay. <laughs> you just mentioned repetition and throughout the entire week and in the chat, there's been lots of questions about repetition, why it's important and a little bit of resistance towards repetition. So can you talk about why it's important and maybe disarm some of the resistance towards it? Sure. Throw the screen up, Tommy. Look here for a moment. What we're really fighting is the paradigm. The paradigm is nothing but a group of ideas that have been fixed in the subconscious mind genetically and environmentally before you even had the chance to think. When we want to change that, because that controls our behavior, it controls what we attract and it controls the results. This was planted through repetition. If we want to change it, we've got to get an idea and it's through repetition over and over and over and over and over. Pretty soon, this takes over, 
and you're going to find that this starts to change. And this takes over. What you're doing is changing the paradigm, and the only, there's only two ways to change it. One is through constant spaced repetition, and the other is through an emotional impact. Uh, it's highly unlikely that's going to happen. It's repetition. Anybody will tell you that. I'll tell you. You become a consultant here, and you do exactly what we say, you're going to get the results that Mark and uh, Julie are getting. Both big numbers. We have all kinds of people earning big, big numbers. Now, we have some that aren't, but they're not doing what we tell them. They're going to do it their way. They know better than us. We've only been at it 50 years. If you're, if you're um, looking at this and you okay. want to do this, for God's sake, do it. Don't back away from it. Don't let it scare you. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. Do what you want to do. Go ahead, Mikey. There's a question that I've asked our success advisors on our Coach's Corner this week to end our Coach's Corner segments. And I wanted to ask you the question as well, which is, what is your one piece of advice to everyone who's registered for this training and listening to this call on how they can get the absolute most out of the training and make this training a jumping off point for the success they're going to create and make it make this be a turning point in their life? Well, you know, there's such good information here. How long does these stay up, Tom, Mikey? How long do they play? And until Monday at midnight Eastern. Okay. Well, that's quite a while. You've got to know, you've got to take your pen and be able to write very clearly what you want. Very clearly what you want. And don't worry if you don't know how to get it. If you know how to get it, it's probably not doing you much good. If you know how to get it, you're going sideways. When you don't know how to get it, you're going off into the unknown. And that's where you want to go because that's where the beauty of life is, where we've never been. So you've got to have a goal. You don't know how to get it, that's fine. You can't afford it, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's if you want it, that's the only thing. Go back over, take some time. If it's to Monday night, did you say? Um, Yes, until Monday night. Get into this on the weekend. Watch it as often as you can. There's five different lessons here. We hit different things. Some of the things we hit the same thing every day. Um, it's the repetition. Keep listening to it. Watch it often. If, if I was just starting and this was the, the opportunity I had, man, I'd play this almost nonstop for Saturday and Sunday. I would bury myself in it. Um, that's how I really got. I used to, listen, I used to take all my books and records, and I'd go down to a little motel hotel on Jarvis Street in Toronto. And that's where all the hookers and pushers and drug actors were. It was a very bad street. But this was a very clean-looking little motel hotel. And I'd go there, and I'd go in and stay there for three or four days. Nobody knew where I was, just studying. That little motel hotel was the very first um, um, of the uh, hotels, um, uh, what's the number one hotel in the world today? Is uh, Hilton Weston? No, no, no. Keep going. Um, Sheridan. No. Four Seasons. Four Seasons. That was the first Four Seasons hotel. Yeah, little motel hotel, and look what it grew into. And I always relate to that. And I relate what I'm doing. And look what it's growing into. And understand this. I did not build this company. We built the company. This company was going very well. But there was a stop. We got stuck. And Sandy Gallagher came 15 years ago. She was the missing link. And immediately, I gave her half this company just to become a part of it. That's what it was worth to me. I wanted the company to grow. I wanted everybody in it to win. I wanted you to learn so that you could win. And that's what we're doing. Go back over the weekend and keep studying, thinking of what you want. But watch this. And if you have a desire to be a